Hi everyone and welcome to Tuesday's Tips at 2 with Kimber Bell. My name is Laurie and today we have got a great treat planned for you. To start with we're going to talk about Emma's pillows but before we get started I want to make sure that you guys remember that last week we were going to have a giveaway and yes we are having a giveaway. We are going to give away three prizes so we have three winners and what we'll do is if you will make a comment on Emma's pillows um, one of them that you like, your favorite design, or if you've already made one, if you would share your picture, we would love that. And we would love to enter you in for a drawing. So just tell us what you like about Emma's Pillows, and we will enter you in. Now, I do want to say hi to a few people. I know you guys are from coast to coast almost. Usually we have Florida, Texas, Colorado. Um, I met a gal at Girlfriends the other day and, and her name was Linda, so I told her I'd say hi to her today. We also have probably people from Ohio, Indiana. Do we have? They're still getting on right oh, now. Oh, you're still getting on right now. But we really appreciate all of those that are tuning in. So I will go over the way, the rules for winning the prize. We will announce the winner tomorrow. So tomorrow on Facebook and Instagram we will be announcing the winner however you do need to be on Facebook to make the comment in order to enter to win so make sure you get on Facebook and watch the video and make a comment um, Emma's collage pillow so a comment on which one is your favorite or a picture of one if you've already made one and we'd love to hear from you all right, so to get started, today I wanted to cover part two of a three-part series of Emma's collage pillows. Um, we did, we touched on Emma's last week, but we also showed the one that was in the Bella box. Today we're actually just showing just Emma's, but I wanted to kind of review a little bit of what we already had talked about. So I know that we started out with coloring, right? Colors. So I grabbed a bunch of fabric scraps, and I like to cut them all kind of equally so I cut them all the same size it's easier for my brain to process if I have them all the same size so I have here you can see some navies I have some greens grays um, a few of these turquoise I even have a, like a white one with green now the way I would go about and here's some of the grays laying out my colors is first pick the design you're gonna do alright so I'm gonna do the floral design and I'm gonna show you a few of those designs really quickly. The first one I'm gonna show you is the design I'm gonna do, and that is this one. And this one is actually uh, done in a larger hoop, but you can do it in a smaller hoop, and it would look something like this, or you could do it, I'll put it like that, and you can see it's on both sides. Now you could do it that way, or you can just take the smaller one and put it in the middle, or you could put one going across the corner, and that's what I love about this. So many options that you can use. Now, this is the sand color of our quilted uh, pillow cover blanks, and this is the mist color, and these are coming at a store, uh, to a store near you. And we also have a navy co color coming and a charcoal color coming. And I'm gonna show you one more design really quickly. Um, that is our home pillow, and this is beautiful. Actually, there's two more. I fibbed. I fibbed. Okay, so there's home, and this one can be done in different sizes. You don't have to do this particular size of the home. You can do a smaller one. Let's say you wanted to put home along the bottom, and you wanted to put uh, the bird's nest that I'll show you next along the top, or if you wanted to add the flower, or let's say you move home down to the bottom corner, and you have a flower coming up out of the other corner. There's so many options that you can do. Let me show you the very last one. I love this one. And I love the way they've done it in these bright, beautiful colors. Can you see that? Um, I love this. So you can actually mat mix and match uh, these different designs. You don't have to just do one design. Now I wanted you to see this one's in a corner right here, as you can see. This one is centered right in the middle. And the other floral one I showed you is on the two sides. Now in the Emma Collage Pillow instructions, it actually has instructions for both, or all three ways of doing that. And I'm gonna cover that just briefly with you for things to think about when you're actually hooping your 
pillow, uh, your quilted pillow cover from Kimber Bell. Okay, so colors. This is the way I decided to arrange mine. Let's see if I can even remember. I may put them in a different spot because I loved how these kind of go together. All right, so this is kind of my lighter colors, if you will. And I'm gonna show you, I've thrown in one dark. Can you see that? That's gonna be a, a color that I think pops for me, but that's one section of one of my uh, pe uh, flowers. I can't think of the word. Um, and then what I did, let's see, I'm gonna put, I think I'm gonna put these together as another flower. Okay, so you've got these. These are my next flower. And then my last flower, I wanted to do something a little different. I'm gonna show you, um, show you how I'm actually gonna stitch this one out. Now, this one, what I chose to do, and I'm gonna show it to you right now. I'm gonna pull this one off the top so you can see. I wanted to hide it from you for a minute. But as you can see, this flower right here, I got started on, <clears throat> kind of big. So this one right here, I made my top kind of grays. And then I think what I'm gonna do, just to break it up a little bit, I'm gonna add just a couple of greens on my next layer. That way you can see this part of the flower and then I'm gonna add greens as my second layer. And I'm just gonna toggle and cut up between these two and cover up the next section with those two. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about sections, if you watched last week's episode, I showed you when you stitched out the leaf how it does an outline. The outline then is covered up by your different colors. And I'll show you how I cut those again as a review. And then the last one that I wanted to add, if I can get these to stay, I need a few more hands. Um, I was gonna add these kind of grayish brown colors for the very last layer. And can you see how that's gonna really pop? These different layers are gonna really pop. And that flower, I'm, I'm excited to see how it turns out. And that's gonna be what I'm doing. So I want you to be creative, get your different colors, do what you'd like. That's the most important thing is using what you have. These were just scraps of fabric that I had and I like to cut them kind of all uniform, like I said. All right. We will talk about placement first, and then I wanna go a little bit more over stabilizers before we move on. So, with my hoop. Someone has a question. Oh, yes. So, yes. Lynn is wondering what size of hoop you're using for this design. Um, well, I have two different hoops here. I have an eight by 12. This one was a nine by 14. So it's filling up the entire middle section of the pillow. That's an excellent question. There are different size hoops. I know that there's um, mega hoops, jumbo hoops. I can't think of the name of all of them. Um, midi hoops, oval hoops, um, 9 by 12, 8 by 12, 7 by 11. Um, there's just lots of different size hoops. So find what hoop's gonna work best for you for what design you're wanting to do. Because like I said, you can do these in more than one uh, uh, you know, you can add two different uh, florals if you would like, and you could actually line them up side by side if you wanted on some of the petals or um, kind of a, an oblong shape or a rep rectangle shape. Those, you could, the pil quilted pillow covers are a rectangle shape. On those, you could definitely, you know, line them up side by side if you wanted to. That would be beautiful as well. So the next thing to think about is when I started quilting this one, um, I wanted it with my zipper on the bottom, not on the top when my pillow was finished because I wanted it to kind of sit on the zipper and I wanted to make a seam at the top, okay? So if that's the case, picture what you want and how you want it to be. So if I were wanting my flower to sit upright this way or even let's say from this corner, then you need to make sure, I just put a little X with a water soluble or a fusible pin so I know my color or corner that I'm doing. And then what I do is I fold up from that corner. So for example, if I were wanting to put it right here on this inside corner and I wanted my zipper to be on this bottom corner, okay, then what I would do is I would Fold this in half, back to where it was. 
keeping in mind this is my side that I'm stitching on right here and then what I do is I have marked the middle of where I want it so I'm going to fold it this way and then I would get my sticky back stabilizer and I would simply place it right in my hoop that same way with the excess over okay so I'm going to open this up like this and you've got this so it's flowing over and there is where you would stitch your um, design and then make sure that your design on your machine is going the same direction that you're wanting it to stitch okay so it depends on where you want it placed. Let's do that again and let's say we want to place it in the bottom corner right here by my zipper, okay? Um, in which case, if I'm stitching on this one side, I'm gonna want the excess off this side. So when I want the excess off this side, then I'm gonna fold it right sides together and I'm gonna mark where I had it on the inside. I fold it up halfway fold it over halfway, and I love this method. I do this for every kind of blank, Kimberbell blank out there. It works really good. Then I have my sticky back stabilizer, and I simply stick it down with, this is my side that goes over my arm, and I stick it down, and I stick it down, and then when I open it up, this excess is laying off the side over my arm of my sewing machine, and embroidery machine, and it's not gonna be interfering or rolling up underneath. Okay, so that's the best way to go about um, getting your blank ready. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about was um, stabilizers. So I know last week we had talked a little bit about a double-sided sticky, um, they're sticky on both sides with paper on both sides and it's fusible on both sides. I, I wanted to share with you some solutions if you have any issues. So. I had some lying around the house and I had used it and it was a little bit non-sticky. It lost some of its stickiness and of course every product out there is a little bit different. Um, so what I had done is I had stuck this down and when I was stitching around it I noticed, and this is something always pay attention to, between the quilted pillow cover and the layers that I had going on here, I needed to raise my presser foot. So make sure if your presser foot is dragging it all on your surface, raise that presser foot, really, really important. Now, if you can see right here in the middle, I fussy cut, that means I cut around this perfect flower shape that I wanted to show up on my final design. So I purposely cut around that and I laid everything else down and this is the last piece I put on. So it's actually exposed on all sides. Well the problem was when I was stitching it, you can see it just doesn't quite catch in that line to start with and this is just the outline. Now when it starts doing all the inside stitching, which I love about this design, it's going to keep doing the stitching and I don't want it catching on any of that, okay? We have a fabulous, fabulous um, stabilizer here at Kimber Bell. It's called the Water or the Wash Away Topping. It's uh, got the light blue. It's our embroidery stabilizer, but it's the Wash Away Topper, uh, a topping. The topping is the most important part right there. Make sure it's the topping. It's going to be kind of a clear looking film and you lay this over the top of your design, you can put it in your sewing machine or your embroidery machine and it will not allow any of these to get caught because you don't fuse it just yet. You've got to trim around this before you fuse this down. Another great solution is our Kimberbell Fusible Peel and Stick. Now this is a great, um, <clears throat> great product. I love this product. Um, what, what you'll do, and I can show you how you use this, but you iron it to the back of your fabric, okay, and the paper side is still on it. So you iron the fusible side to the back of your fabric and cut your shape. Once you've cut your shape, you peel off the paper and it's very good and sticky. I, I love, I, I know that this has got a great stick to it, I've used it many times. So, and it's reusable. like meaning you can peel it up and re-stick it somewhere um, if you don't like where it looks. Um, for example, let's say you put it there and you're like, ah, I want to move it. You can reposition. That's the word I'm looking for. It's repositional. Okay. Once it's stitched down and you trim around the outside edge, then 
there's so much stitching that happens on these beautiful designs that you don't have to worry that it, the edges will stay down for you. So I'm just letting you know these are wonderful options and I'm gonna show you this option right here. I'm gonna show you this option right here. All right. Um, and this is what this stabilizer looks like, isn't it? It's kind of, it's really cool. I love this stuff. Now it is water soluble, so you don't want to iron this, okay? We're gonna remove it before the iron goes down on it. And the other thing, I would recommend that you tape it down in place. And my Kimberbell paper tape uh, is right here. I'm gonna grab that. I love uh, using this. So I'm gonna tape, tape the paper tape right here, okay? And then I'm gonna put this in the machine. I'm gonna show you what I mean by it just catch, keeps it from catching. I love that. So I'm gonna put this over here. I'm gonna wake up the machine a little bit. And, all right. And one thing I mentioned that I want to make sure I show you how to do right now, raise the presser foot. I just barely finished raising the presser foot. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just go ahead and stitch around the outside edge. And this is just tacking it down. I love this. Can you see how that just glides right over the machine, or right over the, the stitching, okay? I'm not gonna spend time having you watch the whole stitch out, but I just wanted you to see how it works really well and this just glides right over this material, okay? The other thing I wanted to show you is, I'm gonna pull this out, the other thing I wanna show you is you can tear this away when, once you've trimmed around the outside edge, you can actually um, tear it away and it's not anywhere in your project. That's what I love about this. You can see that it's, it's not anywhere in your project. Do you see how it just stitched right where I tore it? Or tore right where I stitched it. That way you don't have to worry about it. Um, it won't, you don't have to get your project wet, in other words, to get rid of it. You just tear it away, okay? That's one beautiful thing that I love about this, is you can see right where it tore, it tore great and very easily, okay. So the last thing I was going to show you and share with you, um, next week we are going to talk about trimming and ironing, um, but today I wanted to share with you how you, I'm going to hand this yeah. over, um, I'm going to show you how you would go about ironing and using the Kimber Bell fusible peel and stick. That's what I've got right here. All right, and I've got a hot iron. I don't want to burn anything here. Here we go. Okay. Um, I would use a hot, dry iron. Don't use an iron that's uh, got a s steam to it. You don't want to get rid of the sticky. You want to keep the sticky, okay? So I've got my blue piece of fabric right here. And I have got the paper side and the fusible side. And I'm gonna go just like this. And I, I like to fuse it. You're gonna have to get it nice and hot to get that fusible um, side to stick. I like to also hit it from the other side just quickly, okay? So, and then you're gonna let it cool just a little bit because it's really hot. I don't wanna burn my fingers. Now what I'll do is I'll take scissors and just cut my shapes, okay? And I just have been cutting them between one and three inches. Just have fun with the shapes. Um, it's one of those things where you can color outside the lines, so to speak. You can cut outside the lines, cut it however you want. Um, I can make a lot of fun kidney bean looking shape ones. Um, I like to make sure you have round edges. That's kind of an important step, is make sure that they have round edges to them. Okay, um, no sharp points. You can have points, just don't make them sharp. So I'll show you right here. This one, you can see has a little bit of a point to it, but it's not a sharp point, okay? Now the next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna move this iron back a little bit so I don't burn myself. Um, I am just gonna find a light fabric so you can see how this repositions, okay? So here's my 
uh, the one I just cut, you're going to actually take the paper off the back and when you take the paper off the back, you're going to feel a nice, wonderful sticky. I love this. This is a great stickiness. And you just place it right on your fabric and it's repositional. I'm going to peel it off and you could reposition it if you wanted to. And that's what I love about the Kimberbell Fusible Peel and Stick is it's really easy to reposition. All right. Hopefully that was helpful um, in making your collage pillows. And we really appreciate you tuning in today. Do we have any questions, Maddie? Um, we don't have any questions. But okay. We can just go over what they'll be winning. And absolutely, what, absolutely. Uh, the giveaway again. Okay. So the giveaway. Do I tell them what it is? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. So I don't know if you noticed that every once in a while you'll see people on camera that wear this wonderful blue T-shirt that's called our Kimberbell T-shirt, and it has our statement on it it's great what, what would it be officially do you know Andrew uh, like experience, experience the joy of creativity but what is that like our and I love that Catherine. that's what we want you to experience is we want you to experience the joy of creativity and it's got our Kimberbell logo on it so people will know it's from Kimberbell we've got three of those that we are going to give away and if you will comment on this particular video on Emma's pillows, comment which one or which design is your favorite. You could even talk about uh, one of the techniques if you'd like. And we would love to give a pillow away to you. We will show it uh, both on our Instagram um, account as well as our Facebook account. However, you need to comment on the Facebook account if you want to win. But we will announce the winners on both Instagram and Facebook. And they, that is all we have for today. Now remember, next week we're going to talk about finishing up these pillows. Is there any other questions that we have? That's um, the giveaway. No, nope, that's it. All right. I'm just excited about these pillows. Oh, you guys are going to love them. Just you can use your scraps up. It's just you can be so creative. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Happy stitching.